Today we're building a DIY shoe rack with a burnt Shoshigi Bond finish. I've had these spalted pine boards sitting on my wood rack for a long time, and I was never sure what to build with them. They've got a ton of character, but I didn't have that much material. Now the boards still had a live edge on them, but they were in pretty decent shape other than some large knots. But most of them were fairly flat, with the exception of this one. This one was more like a guinea pig seesaw than a flat board. Now I didn't have enough material without using this one, so I had to cut off the biggest part of it that was bowed to try to help flatten it. And to get straight edges on these boards, I went to the joiner. I jointed one edge flat to give me a good reference surface for the table saw fence. Now, but the bowed board, I had to also face join it to take that out. Now, this is a task that only a joiner can do without special jigs or sleds. And after a few passes, it was pretty near flat. And the shoe rack is going to have three shelves, and I was now limited by the length of this short board. So I used that piece to mark the best sections of the other ones and trim them to size. I cut all the parts down on my miter saw, and if you're using dimensional lumber like 1x4 or 1x6s for your shelves, you can just go ahead straight to this step and not have to worry about all this. But cut to rough length with a straight edge, I ripped the boards to width. Each shelf is going to be made of a wider piece and a narrow one. I had to vary the cuts on the boards a bit to make sure I could get the same width when I glued up each of these panels. I would rough planed these boards back when I got it. But since I face jointed one of the boards, I needed to take the other ones down a bit in thickness to get them to the same size. So I busted out my planer from Jet, the sponsor of today's video, and got to work milling everything down to a strong three quarters of an inch. Now the Jet joiner and planer are a great combo in my shop and they let me work with rough wood that I get from people who know I'm a woodworker, strangers off Craigslist, or in this case, one of my dad's friends. And milling machines like these open up a whole new side of woodworking, and if you're serious about the hobby, I highly recommend getting a planer and a joiner. I'll have links below in the description where you can find out more about these, and thanks to Jet for sponsoring this video. After milling all the boards, I laid them out and I matched them together for the best look I could get for each panel. And the glue up isn't much to speak of here with only two pieces per panel. One thing to watch out for though is with soft woods like pine, you can really dent them if you clamp too hard. So I used offcuts between the panels and the clamp jaws to even the pressure along the edges and help avoid those dents. So the shelves are drying for the glue up, but now I need the pieces for the sides and I grabbed this cedar from my offcut bin. This is from the modern outdoor chair I made and I want to use cedar because I'm going to try Shoshigiban. If I said that right. Shoshigiban. But basically, it's where you burn the wood and turn it black. I think a black finish is going to look really cool with the stains that are in that pine from the spalting. So I'm going to put this together and then we'll go through the Shoshigi Bond process and see how it turns out. And the cedar I grabbed was almost one and three quarters of an inch thick and I wanted to bring it down to one and a half inches. So I ran all the sticks through the planer to thin them down. And from there, I went back over to the table saw and ripped the board so that they would be one and a half inches square. This is the same dimension of a standard 2x2 two two that you'd buy from the home center, so you could definitely use that versus milling your own. I cut off one side of each cedar piece on the miter saw to establish a square end. Then I used that freshly cut side against the stop block to cut four tall legs to size. Now these will be connected with some short pieces to make the side frames. And since my stop block only goes down to 13 inches, I set it to 10 inches longer than what I needed, and I used a 10 inch spacer to offset that cut. Now this is an easy little trick to get repeatable cuts under 12 inches with a stop block system. Now I'm using pocket holes to join the side frames, and once it's all assembled, all the holes are going to be hidden. But if you prefer, you could use miters or dowels here for the connections as well. Now I assembled the frames with 2.5 inch pocket screws, and normally I wouldn't use glue on an in grain to long grain joint like this, since it's not very effective. But with the heat from the Shoshigi Bond burning that I'm going to be doing, I figured any extra hold is going to help and be good because I thought those frames might warp a little bit. I'm going to have free plans for this build using off the shelf lumber and a cut list that you can modify if you want to. So check the link down below in the description if you want to build one yourself. And it's a tight fit to get your drill in on these frames, so you're going to need to switch to a shorter driver bit or use a right angle attachment. Now the center shelf is held in place by two small supports in the middle. I ripped an extra short support in half to make those two parts. I measured and marked the frame to give 10 inches of clearance on the bottom shelf and 8 inches for the middle shelf. 
And I size these to fit our shoes and my boots are gonna go down low, so that's why it's a little bit taller. But you can adjust this to fit your needs, whatever you want. And now it was time to go outside and try my hand at Shishigi Bond. Now I'm using a Map Pro gas torch here, but a propane burner like what you use for soldering would work fine as well. Now, or if you wanna go all Mad Max on it, you can use a weed burner torch and really put out some flame. Now I used some scrap cedar and I was torching the wood and trying a few different techniques. And basically you can go from just lightly burning it to charring it really good. But honestly, just try it yourself and you'll get the hang of it really quickly and see what you like. And being an Eagle Scout, I always love to make a little fire. So I did a couple different combinations of doing it kind of lightly away and then putting the flame right on it. I really like how the flame just right on it kind of chars it a bit better. And then also it's about how you scrape it. So I used two different types of scrapers, just like a hard nylon brush and then a hard wire brush. And the hard wire is really aggressive. So I think I really like the nylon bristle look and charring it. So that's what I'm gonna go for. But it's a great idea to test things out before you jump into it. So get some scrap and do some burning and just see how it looks and see if you like it because I don't know what I'm doing, but <laughs> hey, you can see what you like depending upon the materials and the wood that you have too. I threw the frames on my welding table and I started charring them nice and crispy. And obviously use caution here and do this outside and have some water nearby if you're gonna need to put out any flames. Now, like I mentioned, I was a little nervous that the heat was gonna mess with the frames and make them warp, but it didn't at all. The only real issue I had trying to burn these was in the corners. It left this little thin line where the pieces met and I couldn't quite get a char in there, but instead of just really scorching it and gator backing the wood, I just left it be. And yes, this is as fun as it looks. Here's a shot of the before and after, and you can see what a cool look this gives the cedar and how different it is from the natural wood. And right as I was about to start scraping, I also had a change of heart. I was really digging this super dark look, so I decided to see what it would look like if I had just wiped the soot off versus brushing it off. Because when you brush, it made it a little bit lighter. I used some shop towels and I wiped off some of the loose debris, and I loved how it looked. So I rubbed the rest of the soot off of the frames, and then I took them inside for finish. I put on a coat of water-based polyurethane to seal in the char and deepen that color. And the wood was really dry as expected and it soaked that first coat right up in most spots. Now while the first coat was drying, I switched back over to the shelves. Now since the shelves are less than 13 inches, I ran them through my planer for a few light passes to smooth everything out instead of spending my time sanding that joint flush. Now after that, I took them over to the table saw and I pulled out Fred the sled to cut them to their final size. I squared one edge of each shelf for a good reference surface, and then I clamped a stop block on my fence and set it to the final shelf length. Now this let me safely and easily cut the three shelves to the same length. And to soften the edges, I put a chamfer on the top side of all the shelves with my router. And hearing protection is clutch when you're doing loud operations like this. Now you've seen me wearing these Isotunes earbuds for a couple years now, and I really enjoy them. If you want to try a pair out, Isotunes is offering $10 off your order using code FTBT. So check the link below in the description if you want to grab a deal on a pair. Now after sanding the shelves, I put on some finish and it really brought out the character in the wood. I usually hate pine with just a clear coat on it, but I was loving how it looked with the dark streaks. And after a second coat, those legs were looking amazing and it was a great pairing. And I gotta tell you, I am really pleased with the way that this finish came out. I'll give you some close-ups here, but the look on it is really nice. It's got a decent sheen, but uh, there is nothing as far as picking up as the soot. All that is trapped in there, and it just has a super rich finish. This is Shigi Bon. I would give it two thumbs up. I think it's a great look, and it's gonna go really well with the platforms and the spalting and the pine. So let's get it put together. I flipped the sides upside down and I started with the top. I'm just using screws to attach the shelves, but pre-drilling them first. I spaced the legs in from the end of the shelves and this overhang really makes the contrast between the pine and the burnt cedar stand out. When I flipped it over to attach the middle shelf, I realized I had made a mistake. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about where I was putting the screws and these literally just went right into the recess of the pocket hole and grabbed almost no wood on that side. So I readjusted where the screws went and I also upgraded to two inch screws from the one and a quarter that I was using to make sure that I had a solid hold. I flipped it over this time without ripping the top shelf off and I clamped the center shelf in place and attached it with screws. 
I had to go back to one and a quarter inch screws here because of that thinner center support. Now for the bottom shelf, I flipped it back over yet again and I clamped the shelf in place and secured it with screws from the underside using those longer two inch screws here as well. And while I had it upside down, I drilled some small recesses in the feet and put some rubber foot pads on there to keep the wood off the ground and help keep it level. Now this was a very simple build, but I got to use some interesting wood and try a new finishing technique out. And I even made a great place to put some footwear to boot. If you want to watch another video, I've got a great playlist of DIY furniture projects queued up for you right there you can check out. If you want the plans for this build, you can check them down below in the description. Until next time guys, get out there and build something awesome.